A little while ago, one of our regular viewers, 00 Heaven, said that he thought I could make a video on paint drying and it would still be essential viewing. Well, that's a hell of a compliment and uh, I'm not sure it's justified, but I thought, well, it's a bit of a challenge, isn't it? Can I make a video about paint drying that is interesting or even essential viewing? You be the judge. Leave your comments below and be warned, if you tell me it's a good video, it'll probably only encourage me to make more and before you know where you are you've got a sequel and then a box set which you'll be able to watch on Christmas Day rather than The Great Escape because everybody knows how The Great Escape ends but who knows how this video ends. You might think that a video about paint drying would end up with dry paint but not necessarily because this is complicated stuff. I mean this involves chemistry. Now the first thing you need to know is that paint can be divided up into roughly two categories which is water based and oil based or solvent based whatever you want to call it. They're paints containing alkyds. Now solvent based paints contain VOCs, volatile organic compounds which are generally bad for the environment. They combine with other pollutants to form smog in cities and nobody likes smog. So not only are water-based paints better for the environment, they're better for the people using them. Now one of the major characteristics of water-based paints is that they dry a lot faster. Now there are two stages of drying in water-based paints. The first is evaporation, which is basically all that water evaporating out into the atmosphere, and that gives them that touch dry feel in as little as an hour, I'd say. You may think that they're ready for recoating. But something else is happening below the surface that you may not even be aware of, and that is a coalescence. That is is the, the ingredients, the polymers in the water-based paint, the latex or the acrylic, whatever it is, knitting together to form a uniform surface which is durable and also attractive because you've got to have attractive looking paint haven't you. And what can happen is that if the drying time is affected either by atmospheric moisture, by rain, by steam, by anything like that, then the surface doesn't dry and the coalescence can't form it can't do its job underneath because it's basically still wet. And when it does dry you sometimes get a patchy or a streaky looking surface. Basically where the polymers haven't knitted together properly but it's not the end of the world because what you can do is just give it a light rub down and re-coat it with another coat of water-based paint. But of course you don't want to do that because that costs money and takes time. So it's worth looking at the atmospheric conditions and making sure the humidity is below 80% because if you've got high humidity then then that water that's trying to evaporate off the surface of the paint has nowhere to go. The air is practically saturated and so it's a bit like if you're trying to sweat in the tropics, you can't do it because the air around you is already so wet it doesn't want to take any more moisture, especially from your smelly sweating body. Now solvent based paints dry by the solvents evaporating into the atmosphere but all the time there are other ingredients in the paint which are knitting together and take longer to dry. And you cannot recoat solvent based paints as quickly as you can water based paints because you will need to allow this drying process to take place. And even if it appears touch dry, if you feel it and nothing comes off, you may think I'll take a chance and put another coat of solvent based paint on top of that one. But what you then find is you've got two different surfaces drying at different rates and of course that can lead to a loss of adhesion. That can lead to those two surfaces pulling on each other, cracking, crazing or even peeling. You must allow that first coat of solvent based paint to thoroughly cure which is something like 24 hours. Sometimes you get away with 16 hours but generally it'll be the next day before you can put another coat on. Well having said that there are some hybrid paints which are a mixture of the solvent and the water based and uh, they've probably got the best of both worlds and they allow a certain amount of durability but a faster drying time and easier brush cleaning. But again you've got to read the instructions and you've got to allow the correct drying time for any paint you use. Now there are exceptions in as much as there are paints or varnishes to be more accurate that you put on and what you do is you put one coat on and before that is fully cured you put the next coat on and there is a window for that and sometimes they say you've got to put the next coat on within four hours of putting the first one on in order to make that chemical bond and if you don't do that you can get the coat you've put on subsequently if it's being put on dry varnish or something like that 
peeling off. And the way to get around that is that you have to rub that varnish down. If it's dried out completely, you just give it a light rub down with a fine abrasive, and then you can put the next coat on. And another reason that you need to avoid putting a second coat of solvent-based paint on before the first one's dry is that you sometimes get this curtaining effect where the paint below has sagged and it ends up looking like the curtains on the London Palladium. All sort of droopy and, you know, curtainy. Now, other things that can stop paint drying is contamination and maybe the paint just being a little bit too old. It's been hanging around in the can for a while. The solvents have gone off and they haven't left enough to allow that paint to fully activate. What you can do in those cases, you can add a dryer to the paints, but don't try adding things which aren't approved. There are commercially available dryers that you should use, but you've got to avoid using things which aren't approved. Now, I did some work some years ago, some plumbing work for a paint chemist and he was a freelance guy who worked for all the major paint companies and he often got called in as an expert witness when these things went to court. Now you might think that's a bit strong paint job going to court but think about the commercial ones. He was telling me about a case some people were painting a football stadium and the paint just wasn't drying and people were going to watch football matches leaning against the steelwork in the stadium and getting paint all over their lovely jackets. Now if it happened to be the colour of their favourite football team they probably weren't too upset but if they were away fans and they got that color on them they may not even get home in one piece he went along he had a look at it and he took a few samples of the paint took them back to his lab now what he found is that the paint had been adulterated or contaminated in some way with paraffin and he realized that what the guys have been doing is diluting the paint with some paraffin to make it flow more easily. It was cold weather and they thought this is really hard work putting this stuff on so chuck a bit of paraffin in there and it flowed nice and easy. And of course this was a problem but the paint did eventually dry but then he couldn't really sign it off. He couldn't guarantee that paint was okay because there might be a loss of adhesion. I mean two years time the paint all might start peeling off. The contractors have run a mile or gone out of business if they got any sense. And the football club is left with a huge bill for repainting the stadium. And we all know how skint football clubs are don't we? I mean they can't even afford to pay their players a living wage. So a lot of things can affect the drying of paint. It could be contamination from the surface, it could be adulteration, it could be the atmospheric conditions, it could be wind even it can be rain it can be sunshine so there's a lot for the poor old painter to take into account when he first decides to apply the paint but of course painters have got to earn a living and sometimes they take a chance on these sometimes it works and sometimes they come literally unstuck so here's my guide for avoiding trouble with drying paint first of all don't paint if the relative humidity is above 80 percent Secondly, don't paint if the air temperature is less than three degrees from the dew point. Now this is quite complicated to work out, but what it basically means is if you had a warm day and you've got a lot of humidity in the air, then as the evening cools down, those surfaces are going to get colder and you're going to get condensation on the surfaces. And basically that means that if it's got too late in the day, don't do it. Do something else like a bit of rubbing down or playing with your phone. And this is an obvious one, don't paint if it looks like rain. Except of course when you're painting indoors. Now when it comes to indoors, there is moisture indoors that you've got to be careful of and again that humidity can be a problem. So if you've been painting a bathroom, shower room or a kitchen and the customers are very keen to get on with using it, tell them not to use it for at least 24 hours to allow that paint to fully dry and cure a little bit before they start subjecting it to steam. Because if you don't, it can peel off. And if you happen to be painting and you get a couple of scuff marks on the paint or something like that, dirty marks and you're tempted to wash them off, don't do it until the paint is fully dry. In other words, leave it till the next day. Even though it's tempted to get a wet cloth and start rubbing it, what you'll find is that even though it's touch dry, that can reactivate the paint and make it look a mess. Whereas if you leave it till the following day, you can very often get a damp cloth and just wash it off without affecting the paint surface itself. Finally, if you're working for customers who have spent their life collecting knickknacks from their travels 
and also have pictures of their children and their grandchildren and Uncle Tom Cobbley and all. They also have a load of other junk on their windowsills, which they're really desperate to get back on because they want to get rid of you and they want to get back to normal. But tell them not to do it. Tell them to leave all that stuff off the painted surface for at least three or four days to let that paint cure. Because even though it feels dry and they might think they can put all those things back on, it's not dry. If you remember nothing else from this video, even though it looks good to the naked eye, there's an awful lot of stuff going on behind the surface that we know nothing about. A little bit like politics. Cut. <sighs> Don't mention politics. I've told you, every time you mention politics, we lose subscribers. Uh, this, this channel's going downhill rapidly. I think we're going to have to bring back James. Where's James? Hello, mate.